Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. This is Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us. Um, I've been MIA for a couple weeks. Uh, Darnie and I had a wonderful time at Christians United for Israel uh, Summit in Washington, D.C. John Hagee and 5,000 of our closest friends. <laughs> uh, Christians United for Israel is, is now 7.1 million members. It's the largest Christian Zionist uh, pro-Israel organization in the world. And it was a real honor for us to be there. Um, and, and I want to mention, of course, uh, you can always uh, get on my blog by going to ElishaVision.com. Just ElishaVision.com. Elisha with an S. And I uh, invite you to come and uh, read up. You can go down and read through uh, past ones. But I did this one on lobbying for Israel. Before I mention it, though, uh, I want to open with prayer. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would use this video for information and for blessing and encouragement uh, for believers and other folks around the world. Thank you, Father, for your blessing. We just thank you that you're a faithful God and you're keeping your word to Israel, even to a thousand generations. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray, Yeshua ben Yehovah. Amen. All right, this is a picture from the conference, Israel Lives, and uh, the, we, had, we were up there for four days, had a wonderful time, actually had the opportunity of meeting with uh, one of the goals of the conference is to lobby uh, Congress people, and we met with uh, a representative of uh, Senator Tim, Tom Tillis, and we also had a wonderful time. Just four of us sat down with uh, with our congressman from the from our area here in North Carolina, George Holding, and he he spent uh, about 20 25 minutes with us in his office. Just had a good conversation, and he's standing with Israel, and we really support him. Um, and uh, we heard speakers like Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton, U.S. Ambassador David Friedman, Holocaust survivor Irving Roth, and on and on and on. Just wonderful, wonderful time we had there. And, and uh, we pray for Christians United for Israel that their ministry will continue. They have a great outreach now on campuses called Kufi on Campus to over 300 universities. So uh, pray for Christians United for Israel. It's a great uh, great organization, great ministry. And um, here's, a, here's a good story. I'll start with the news. President Trump says, let the Palestinian Arabs go. <laughs> and what he's talking about is uh, there's a plan. I don't know if it's, a, it's the peace plan, which is being postponed again probably till after the uh, September election in Israel. But uh, the idea is to let the Palestinians move to neighboring Arab countries. They're all Arab people anyway. That's what Palestinians are. Arab people, and let them move to neighboring countries and receive full citizenship. Right now, they have no citizenship. All they have is papers from the Palestinian Authority, which is not a country. It never has been a state called Palestine. So, uh, but uh, I, my cartoon favorite guy uh, in Israel, Yaakov Kirshen Drybones, has one, a plan B for Donald Trump. He says, Trump appeals to Hamas and the PLO, let thy people go, <laughs> like Moses in uh, Egypt. Uh, but uh, it's a good plan, and uh, I, I, I think that might be the answer uh, you know, for the uh, what's so-called West Bank, which is actually biblical Judea and Samaria. Here's some good news that another Hamas leader has defected and tells all. He's actually the brother of a, a man who became a Christian called son of, of, son of Hamas, Musab Yosef is his name. Well, his brother has now defected. I don't know that he's become a Christian, but he's defected and he's, he's revealing a lot of the inner stuff of Hamas, which is a great thing uh, for Israel, Israel and the West. And uh, we need to pray for him. Uh, their father uh, was the, one of the co-founders of Hamas. And uh, so that's really good that they're seeing the difference. And this story fits with that. Are Arabs leaving Islam? A new survey suggests that Islam is losing its grip on disillusioned Arabs across the Middle East. And uh, it's not only the disillusion, but many Arabs are coming to Jesus and recognizing, many former Muslims are recognizing that Jesus is the Son of God. And uh, so that's a wonderful thing that's happening. And uh, we pray that that'll continue and that that'll, that'll be part of what will bring uh, peace eventually to Israel. Of course, we know that the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the, is one of, that's how real peace is going to come. <laughs> So uh, Abbas, the head of the PA, says, aid to families of martyrs is a red line. And of course, when he says martyrs, in quotes there, uh, he's talking about terrorists because they, 
they have a program that the West calls Pay to Slay because they pay terrorists. And there's actually a, a written list of if you lose an arm, you get this much money. If you lose a leg, you get this much money. If you're killed, you get this much money. And your family gets some money and all of this. And it's basically the, the way they keep their terrorist organizations going and getting, motiv motivating people to, to uh, attack. So uh, he is just so totally cut off from, <laughs> from anything that President Trump would ever be able to, he can't ne negotiate with this guy, but it's obvious. Uh, I, I like to remind you that when Trump met with Abbas in Bethlehem right after Trump was inaugurated, uh, the first day Trump said, I think maybe I can work with this guy. But this, within a day or two, he found out that Abbas had lied to him when they were meeting in Bethlehem. And I think, I believe from that point on, Trump wrote him off. So we'll see what happens. But uh, Pretty interesting. Uh, meanwhile, here's another example of it. They've just doubled the salary of the murderer of three Israeli teens. And, uh, and th this w happened five years ago. And Israelis were memorializing their deaths that happened five years ago. And so how did the Palestinian Authority respond? They doubled the salary of the murderer, the, the one who murdered these civilian teenagers. Just, you can't make this stuff up. That's so wicked. Little U.S. politics here. Elizabeth Warren says yes to ending Israel's occupation. Well, that says a couple of things. She doesn't understand what occupation is because by legal definitions internationally, uh, the West Bank is considered disputed territory. Some people even say Israel is occupying Gaza. There are no Jews in Gaza at all. <laughs> and so the whole occupation thing is a myth. Uh, but it reveals that she's going to be standing with, with uh, the Palestinians and against Israel. And then also, uh, another story here is that she hired a controversial new campaign staff mem member who had tweeted, I would totally be friends with Hamas. Hamas is, a, a, and on, is on the U.S. official terrorist list. And uh, so she is just off the reservation, if you excuse my pun. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Deb Kefile says that the, uh, you've heard it's probably on the news, that Iran tried to seize a British tanker in, in the Persian Gulf, and uh, Britain uh, chased them off. But uh, there's all this tit-for-tat stuff going on with Iran right now. Uh, but I maintain that Iran is not going to start a war with Israel or the U.S., uh, U.S. or Israel might have to do something to set them back a while because, because they're not part of the present prophetic uh, scene. Uh, they're part of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38. And that doesn't happen until after there's a time of peace in Israel where they actually take down all the walls. And those still exist, so that's not going to happen for a while. Uh, we'll go on. Uh, Iran has also set up a command center at Abu Kamal for attacks on U.S. targets in Israel. This is on the border of in Syria on the border of Iraq. And uh, this is also a very ominous thing, and the U.S. is not going to put up with that. Uh, but we'll be able to deal with Iran without going to a full-scale war, so uh, don't be worried about that. That's my opinion. Uh, meanwhile, the U.S. urges Turkey to stop energy drilling off Cyprus coast. Uh, as you know, and I'll mention more about this, but uh, Israel has great uh, resources of natural gas they've discovered in the Mediterranean off the coast of Haifa. And they're sharing that. It's all, it goes all the way out to the coast of Cyprus. And, uh, and, and so they'll both benefit from it. Now Turkey's trying to horn in on it. They have no rights, no real legitimate claims to it. So uh, that's just another thing they're doing against the U.S. And then the worst thing right now is that they've actually just received the first shipment of Russian S-400s that have arrived in Turkey. And uh, President Trump has warned them that if you accept those uh, Russian S-400 uh, missiles, their defense system, which is state-of-the-art, uh, you will not receive our F-35s. They were already being trained. Some Turkish pilots are being trained for the F-35 stealth bombers. And, uh, and we need to pray that Trump will absolutely shut that off. In fact, one of the bills that we were lobbying for in D.C. this week was that Congress would vote uh, to cut off all connections to the F-35 program. And uh, we need to pray that Congress will do that. Because we, even though they're a NATO member, they're the first NATO member to acquire advanced Russian weapons. And so that's crossing a red line, <laughs> a real red line, that uh, I don't believe that, that Trump will allow that. 
Now, uh, here's another story from Debka file. Uh, friction with Cairo over the Israel, Israel air defense system for Ethiopia's Great Nile Dam. Uh, this is a story I haven't talked a lot about, but uh, Ethiopia and Egypt are arguing over the water rights to the Nile River. Ethiopia has a dam already that takes about 20% of the water away from the Nile. And their new net dam is going to be even bigger and uh, it's conceivable they could even shut off the flow of the Nile, at least temporarily, down to, down to Egypt. It flows actually north, <laughs> uh, but it uh, flows to the Mediterranean. And, uh, and this is quite a controversy between the two countries. And, uh, uh, and Ethiopia has just been purchasing Israel's air defense system, so it creates a little extra friction in there. And we need to pray for wisdom in that situation. Israel Today is uh, reporting that Israel that, that DNA tests shine light on Israel's arch enemy, the Philistines. Long shrouded in mystery, DNA tests on Philistine skeletons shed new light on their origins. Turns out they're not Arabs at all. They're from uh, southern Europe. Uh, and uh, this has now been proven with DNA testing. And uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, of course, you know the Philistines, Gol Goliath and and Delilah and Samson and all of that whole deal, all those biblical stories. Uh, but uh, this actually says uh, that it came from uh, to Israel from southern Europe. And uh, it's quite a profound uh, proof. The theory was there, but now it's proven. So pretty interesting. Of course, the Palestinians claim they're descended from the, from the Philistines, which is a total lie. <laughs> they're Arabs. Uh, but anyway, here's another good story. The biblical city from the time of King David discovered, Ziklag, has been discovered. 3,000-year-old biblical town where David hid from King Saul has been discovered in, in uh, southern Israel. Uh, here's a kind of an artist's rendering of that, Ziklag. Uh, pretty cool. And uh, the, the interesting thing is that, what this, this is another thing of, of Bible proof. Those claiming that the Bible is full of exaggerations and fairy tales suffer another blow with the identification of this Philistine city of Ziklag. So uh, much archaeology in recent years has been just overwhelming evidence of the historical accuracy of the Bible. Uh, and of course, as believers, we accept the Bible by faith. We don't need to have it proven. But uh, it's nice to have archaeological evidence that, uh, that confirms what the Bible says. Um, in Ireland, they have a new bill that would punish... Uh, people who do business with Israel with five years in prison, five years in prison for doing business with Israel. Um, on the principle of Genesis 12.3 that says those who bless Israel will be blessed, those who curse Israel will be cursed, I would say uh, Ireland would be in trouble if they pass this bill. We need to pray for them. Um, Meanwhile, BDS olive oil may be detrimental to your health. And you say, well, what is that? <laughs> well, Israel, of course, is famous for their pure virgin olive oil, some of the best olive oil in the world uh, by experts. Uh, but the boy boycott, divest, and sanction movement against Israel, the Palestinian movement against Israel, which is big on U.S. college campuses and some European nations and so forth, uh, are, are participating well just like I just said there with Ireland. So the BDS movement actually now is trying to produce Palestinian olive oil. And the, the problem is it actually has, uh, it has stuff in it that's not healthy, like dangerous pesticides, pesticides and so forth. It doesn't meet the standards. And yet in the U.S. it's not being mentioned uh, that that's actually happening. So we need to... to uh, Trust, uh, you know, you need to just stick with Israel olive oil. That's the point. <laughs> uh, Ehud Bar Barak is uh, um, running for office again. And that little cartoon says, he, now bearded Ehud Barak denies that calling his new party the Democratic Party is an attempt to mislead Israeli voters. Rumors that he also plans to change his name to Oprah Winfrey have not been confirmed. <laughs> A little humor there. Uh, Meanwhile, Dutch Christians refuse to label Israeli products. Uh, that's a good thing because there was, there was an insistence by BDS that they had to say it, that if it was Israeli or it was from the West Bank and that sort of thing. And this company says that we're selling Israeli uh, wine and not going to label it. Uh, and then 
There's a great new archaeological discovery of Israel unveiling the ancient road where Jesus walked to the temple. There's a picture of it, and uh, it's called the Pilgrim Road. Just recently opened up about a, a week after we were there. That's pretty exciting, actually. Uh, meanwhile, an Arab athlete is labeled a traitor for representing Israel. But other local Arab groups have applauded Hanin Nasser for standing firm as an Israeli. She's an Israeli athlete, a high jump champion, uh, and a citizen of Israel. But the BDS uh, anti-Israel people uh, are on her case because she, uh, uh, you know, uh, functions under the Israeli flag, competes under the Israeli flag. Here's some good news. Argentina officially designates Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. Uh, that's a good thing. And here's a neat uh, story about the, uh, this is uh, Leviathan, the natural gas platform uh, in five stages is being shipped from Texas to Israel. So they'll be able to uh, process all the uh, natural gas that they're finding in the Mediterranean. And uh, this is kind of neat. Netanyahu's son defends Jesus' Jewishness, says it's in the Bible. And what Israel's enemies intended for evil has sparked a serious discussion about Jesus in the Jewish state. And uh, it's pretty cool that uh, both, first of all, he, he, it was a Twitter war with uh, Linda Sarsour, who claims that Jesus was a Palestinian. And of course, it's not true at all. But when he defends it, he says he's a, he is a Jew. It's in the Bible, but he's talking about the New Testament. So it's kind of neat that that he calls the, the New Testament part of the Bible, which Christians, of course, believe. And then finally, incoming tourism continues to break records. We did our part last month, <laughs> taking our 30 people to Israel. And uh, June was the highest June ever. And uh, they've already reached 1.9 million in uh, a sing uh, with revenue. I'm sorry, revenue reached 1.9 million in a single month. And it shows a picture there inside the airport. Well, anyway, the Lord is blessing Israel. We're thankful for that. And I'm glad you've been with us. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for rain in the time of latter rain. And, and thank you, Lord, for Christians united for Israel. Pray you'll bless their, their continued standing with Israel. And we, we agree to stand together, Lord, for your purposes in Israel. We don't stand for all the decisions of the Israeli government or various people of Israel, but we do stand for your uh, prophesied purpose for Israel, to bless Israel and restore Israel in these latter days. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Jesus, the Messiah. Amen.